Thank you all for coming here today. Um, that being said, I want to get a quick hands before we begin. Who's learned something new at JNUC 2019? Fantastic. One thing I can say is that I definitely have as well. Um, one of the disadvantages of being one of the last uh, presentations of the, these three days, uh, some things have changed, some things are updated. As we go through this, I'm going to try and accommodate some of these changes uh, with some of the stuff I say that might not be reflected in the slides as we go through. So that being said, I'm Johan McGuire. I'm the lead system engineer for Denison University. Uh, my Slack handle is Johan. Uh, you've probably seen me around for the Nomad and Nomad login projects, which I try to contribute to as much as I can. So with that, with this presentation, we're going to look at going over um, the challenges that sometimes are faced with enrolling machines and configuring them reliably. Then we're going to look at scaling those installation stacks and those application stacks to be able to make them deployable in a large scale, as well as being able to react as applications change. Because everything's static, right? We get a list, and then it's never updated as we go through. No, everything is always changing. And then customizing that to be able to take in feedback, take in data from the users or IT, and then customizing it as we go through um, the installation and uh, configuration. So with that, we're going to talk a little bit about sort of Denison and our challenge. And with this, a lot of the applications and the naming strategies are stuff that has worked for us. Uh, like Matt mentioned in the previous presentation, this is not a one-size-fit-all solution for some of the application deployments. So take everything with a grain of salt. Uh, look for a better way to do things with this presentation. So with that, Denison is a liberal arts university uh, based just outside of Columbus, Ohio. About 2,400 actively enrolled students with about 1,900 devices, uh, with actually just about an even 50-50 split between Mac OS and Windows devices. We've got about 77 Mac OS software titles, about 74 Windows software titles that we actively deploy and manage um, with our IT uh, services team. Now with that, that's counting all of Adobe, all of Microsoft, and all those application suites as one title. Um, that being said, we're not an IBM or an SAP with about 4,000 applications. That's not what this is about. Um, that being said, let's, now that we have an idea of, grand, of Denison, let's look at enrolling a machine the vanilla way. So with that, when you turn on the machine, and this is specifically looking at uh, automated DEP enrollments of machines, which hopefully you should be using by now, we start with the machine communicating with Apple doing the MDM enrollment, and well as uh, communicating and getting those pre-stage enrollment and GEMF binary installations. Then the enrollment complete trigger file, uh, fires. And then here's the big assumption. Everything completes successfully. Then you get to your configured endpoint. Should be pretty simple. But while GEMF really provides us with this really great way of initially starting this process, there are some real world issues that can cause this and cause this to be interrupted. So with that, power loss. You have users that are trying to get work on the machine. It's doing, it's restarting. Something happens, they turn it off, or it runs out of power. Network loss. Your network goes down. You're doing a Wi-Fi cutover from one to another. That enrollment trigger gets cut off at any point in time. It doesn't proceed past that point, as well as the machine going to sleep, or the user trying to configure, uh, running around or doing something else that causes this, machine, the, this enrollment process to get interrupted. Um, there are a lot of these things that can really interrupt the process. So with that, the most reliable thing I've found with regard to the enrollment trigger is only really scoping one enrollment package or one really script to that trigger. So with that, building off of that idea that there you have one really, really good, reliable uh, installation, I developed something that I like to call the, the Jamf Enrollment Kickstart Workflow. Um, so with this, it's publicly available on my GitHub. Um, the Slack channel is called Jamf Initial Config. Um, that ch Slack channel is actually named after one of the components that we'll get to. So with that, this has three main components, a launch daemon. And what a launch daemon is, if you're not already aware, it's something that gets launched by the system under a root context when the machine boots. With that. We're then able to utilize some little scripting magic to make it work, make some, uh, some custom calls done, some custom checks. 
And then as well, use a jamf trigger, custom trigger, which is aptly named initial config, to be able to really scope those, um, those policies on in a way that's redundant to make sure everything can complete successfully. So with that, when that launch daemon runs, it runs an enrollment script. And what this does is it does a couple things. First thing it does is initializing logging. Every environment is different. You will have things that show up that cause your environment to fail, cause this to fail. Having that logging right out of the get-go is the best way to be able to track that down. It initializes logged in user check so that you're able to either run it at the login window or waiting for the users logged in. Then does an internet access check. That actually uses Google uh, to be able to check that real quick. So with that, um, if you do are only running an internet, um, in Shrunet, I should say, use the proper word, then you will need to edit that. But that's pretty easy, just a simple script. And then as well, um, checks to make sure if the machine has been configured. And then if not, continues on to caffeinate the machine, just like we all probably are, have been drinking coffee all day, need the machine to do that as well. Make sure it doesn't go to sleep during this process. And then finally, calls the initial config trigger. So let's take a look at what this looks like when integrated into the main Apple enrollment workflow. It's a little bit more complicated than we got going on here. So everything happens the way it usually does. Communicates with Apple, gets the Jamf binary, runs the enrollment complete trigger, and then enters the initial config workflow. Um, the launch daemon is installed. And once that's there, it boots up, since the machine's already booted, kickstarts that script under root context, and then is able to continue on. That being said, loops are usually a bad thing here. But what this does is since launch daemons are run on boot of the machine, if the machine ever shuts down, loses network, fails for any reason, and that receipt is not there, it'll start that initial configuration right back up again. Sort of like that enrollment complete trigger, except now making it redundant so that you can then re-trigger and re-continue from then on. So then, every, all those policies you have under that trigger, complete successfully, drops the receipt down. Once that happens, you have a much more reliable way of enrolling and configuring machines as we go through. Now with this, it is a pretty big change. It's a pretty big change for both your Jamf server as well as your enrollment of machines. So keeping that in mind, I actually made two separate uh, wikis to be able to document this workflow. Have everything documented, all the extension attributes, all the scripts, everything that you need under two separate configurations. New Jamf servers, where you, don't, where you want every single machine to go through this workflow, and then also pre-existing Jamf servers so that you don't want to re-enroll, reconfigure all the devices you already have enrolled. That's there. And then also, the default workflow with this is waiting for the user to log in, waiting for the user to be presented with that desktop to start this. Um, this is something that I made the option to be able to run at the login window to be able to do some of the lab configuration that we'll talk about in the next couple slides. So this enrollment workflow is, can be utilized by anyone that's necessary. This is not just simply made for Denison, not simply made for education institutions. This is made to just give a, give a reliable base to be able to build off of. Now with that, let's take a closer look at Denison and what, how we're able to utilize this process. So with Denison, we have this enrollment process works for every single machine we deploy. And with that, we have many different types of machines that go out there. We have personal machines that are used by our faculty and staff as to be able to do their education and do what they need to do. But along with that, we also have student workstations, the one to few many, one to few rather than the one to one. But then also we have our public lab and community spaces that are available with many, 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 many applications, almost reaching that full 77 stack. And with that, there's a lot of additional considerations rather than just these three enrollments. You also have, OK, different colleges. You have different departments within those colleges. And then you have different courses offered by those colleges, all in different rooms throughout the entire university campus. And 
getting this information is not exactly the easiest thing. And this is where it sort of deviates uh, per how you sort of implement this process. Um, if you probably look to the person right of you and next to you, you're probably both all going to be using different asset tracking uh, products, different ticketing products. So for us at Denison, we currently use Web Help Desk to be able to, and then use APIs as scripts to be able to automate and populate this information into extension attributes within Jamf. Um, since it's all run through one initial config policy trigger, you can keep all that logic within Jamf to be able to be easily updatable and scalable as you go through. Now, let's continue on. And now that we have a reliable enrollment trigger, we've sort of looked at the things we have. Let's start to deploy some software. We got those 77 titles. Let's start on that. So with this, we're going to take a look at and specifically use the example of our video production within our finance department. We actually built a brand new um, fine arts department center at Denison last year. This has been a great uh, challenge for us as well. So with that, let's start with the basics. We want some Chrome, Firefox, VLC. Throw that down. But they need to be able to do work. We got our office suite. Boom. Then they want to be able to use the Apple stuff. We got the iWork. Then Adobe. And now we want to throw video production stuff. That's a lot of software. And that's not even all of it. That's just the icons that I can fit on this slide. So now with that, there has to be a better way of organizing this. And it's actually pretty apt, since we're all layering up to be able to go outside and not through that snow yesterday. We're going to talk about layers of software. So when we think about this, we have these, this big array of software that we're trying to delineate down. We, we need a better way of looking at it. So let's start with the basic, the layers of software that every machine at Denison that, you're, might go, that ha goes down. So with that, just base productivity. Everyone needs to be able to do work. That's what machines are for. That's what we as IT are here to empower. So now that we have the productivity, this goes on every single machine, whether it be a student workstation, a public lab space, um, a primary MacBook that's getting deployed to the, the provost. It all comes down. But then let's get a little bit more specific. We layer on the fine arts. And with that, you need the ability to be productive in a creative way. We throw it on Adobe and the entire suite there. But then within fine arts, there's multiple different things. You might have music production. You might have theater. You might have video production. So with that, isolate those out. So for this one, we're doing video production. Let's throw down those video applications. But this department and these disciplines that you have within a department isn't just applicable to a university. Let's look at an engineering. All right. You have electrical engineering. You have your productivity. Every machine gets this. The goal is to do work. You can base that down just in engineering. You got your Autodesk, your MATLAB, your SolidWorks. Throw those down. Then base it off there. Get more specific. Then you have your electrical engineering, your Simulink, and your other um, one of the name that's escaping me at this point in time. So with that, you can really layer anything. And these are not mutually exclusive. You can move these together. All right? You can really layer anything that applies anywhere. When you think about it, you can actually use the Active Directory structure to some degree to do this. You can correlate it to business units. You can correlate it to organizational units. You can correlate it to departments. You can, depart you can lineate this by research, research groups, whatever you need to do. And since all that logic is held within Jamf, you can update this without having to update anything on the end device. It's all hosted within your Jamf server. Now with this, we need some way of organizing these layers. Now, this isn't going to be the penultimate talk on organizing software deployments. Uh, there are plenty of other talks that you can look up that will be able to help you with this. What we do at Denison is we leverage the, audit, the bleh, alphanumeric policy execution that Jamf Pro Policies provides. Simply, if you start the policy with 0, 01, 00, 0, 0, 02, 0, 03, you'll be able to go 00, 01, 02, 03. So what we do 
is we break it down into specific layers. We delineate 0 to 100. With that, general configuration is that base productivity that we talked about. Shared device software, that's our general lab space, basically delineating our one to few, one to many, and then uh, one to one. Discipline, that correlates to our departments. Followed up by location, which is our courses, and then cleanup. This is obviously, since we have a policy, um, alphanumeric policy execution, these are policies that are going to come after the fact and really resolve any of those remaining issues, as well as be policies that must run at the tail end of your configuration. So with this, now that we have everything down, we need to be able to present this in a way that is beneficial to both IT as well as your employees. Every environment is different. Every business is different. Every kind of customization can be different. So with that, you need to be the ability to get input as well as provide feedback. That's what these three, three applications are going to be able to hear to help with you. Now, there have also been many other presentations on these three as, um, to the, 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 over the past couple days. So with that, I recommend also looking at those presentations to be able to help out with this. So the first one is the one that we all know and love and we've heard about many, many times, DEP Notify. So DEP Notify is greatly integrated into both Nomad Login and Jamf Connect Login. So what that means is if you're already using those workflows and you already have those applications installed during your configuration process, if you just move those to the very front of your configuration stack, you can immediately take advantage of these. You can provide, uh, get user input. You can present an end user license agreement, or you, and you can also present feedback to the user about how that, present, how that configuration is going. At Denison, this is how this looks for us. We present this as a pre-stage enrollment package, and then it, as soon as the, de the device gets out of that automated MDM enrollment, this is presented and then follows the Jamf log to be able to present to the user as things are going on. Next, we conveniently have the Mac at IBM enrollment application. And this was actually open sourced at last JNUC. Now with this, this is a fully fledged application. And it is extremely customizable. It runs at the desktop. And it can accept basically unlimited user input, application bundle selections, and user post configuration options, which is actually the one thing that the other two applications don't really support at this point in time. Now with that, this is how it does look. That being said, since it is a full application, um, it is, the full source code is available. So you can actually hop into Xcode and edit anything you want here. And lastly, we have Splash Buddy. It runs at the desktop. That being said, there is a lot of development uh, that might or might not be completed at the time that gets this to run at the login window as well. Configure application bundle and can follow the Jamf log for application installations. So one thing that I learned at this JNUC, there's a new application called Ceremony. Um, I have not personally used it. That being said, if you are more interested and have seen it throughout this JNUC, uh, the GitHub Gallery Part 1 uh, is actually directly after this. Uh, it's an interactive lab where they should be able to talk about Ceremony, uh, which is a continuation of the development for Splash Buddy. And I'm going to give a second shout out here, outside of the keynote, to Secret and Mike Voss uh, for providing me with this photo. This is how their application install looks like uh, for their organization. So with this, being able to get input is extremely important for environments where you need to be able to differentiate by the user input from one application to another. So with that, DEP Notify has the ability to take in two text inputs and four drop-down inputs at maximum, as far as I'm aware. That being said, like I talked about with the Mike at IBM enrollment application, it is a full Xcode application. And it's fully customizable. So the application is theoretically unlimited. And then with Splash Buddy, Splash Buddy actually presents an HTML web page to be able to take information. So with that, you can just iterate on that as much as possible with theoretically unlimited input options. Now with taking input, it's not just the ability for full functionality. 
you sort of got to make it look pretty at the same time. So the main advantage of ZEP Notify is the ability to hook directly into that pre-stage enrollment application. The ability to start as soon as possible and really lock down the device while it's running through that configuration process. With the Mac at IBM enrollment application, you can really specifically tailor it to exactly what your business needs. And then with Splash Buddy, since it is an HTML web page, you can actually just load up a YouTube video if you really wanted to and throw it right in there. The ability to really d present an onboarding video to your new users while their applications are installing on the right-hand side is extremely valuable. So now with that, and with the IBM enrollment application, there is, to some point, a, uh, there is a minimum amount of configuration that is necessary. So with that, the Mac at IBM enrollment application is a full application and has the most customizability options, but at the same time, it does require the max amount of configuration to make work. And with that, it's really good to keep this in mind because we as sysadmins are pushed to be able to get more done as soon as we can. So with that, leveraging knowing how much you need to complete versus how much customizability there is is very important. DEP Notify and Splash Buddy are the easiest to implement. But there is some other things with that. So they are not all MDM agnostic. DEP Notify is the most so, as it can follow both Jamf, Monkey, and FileWave logs. The Mac at IBM enrollment application can work with any scriptable MDM. Scripts you run in the endpoint to be able to call policies, be able to call triggers, that'll be where that'll be able to help you. Uh, Splash Buddy can follow that Jamf log, and if you need more with Splash Buddy, I recommend looking at the ceremony applications when it comes to log following. So with that, let's compare Splash Buddy and DP Notify. And with Denison University, we have 77 applications that we actively deploy to our macOS devices. And with that, it's very important to know our audience, know how we're configuring machines. So with a user input or with a large lab deployment where you have one trigger calling everything, it's very hard to be able to delineate exactly what applications are going down to every single machine and isolating every single configuration that might happen. So with that, branching application configurations, where you have a wide tree of things that might happen, as well as if you have a very large application stack, you're probably going to want to stick with DEP Notify. The ability to just have it follow the log and work as a, just an entry point and then be able to forget as it goes through the configuration process and then removal at the end will remove a lot of the headaches of the configuration process as you go through. That being said, if you have a small application stack, you're deploying and really want to personalize that to your employees, really give them the best onboarding experience you can, that's where Splash Buddy is going to be able to help you, as well as Ceremony, if, they're able to, if that fits your workflow. But along with that, we've talked about these three applications. Every environment is different. With that, there are other couple tools I really want you to be able to keep in mind. Jamf Helper. If you need to provide one-way um, admin to user information, be able to lock down the screen, be able to send client messages, be able to prevent basic workflows, this will help you. You can run it both full screen and Windows options, be able to present some information. Then along with that, you've got Apple Script and OSScript. These would be really good for being able to get those simple user input prompts. If you need just one basic piece of information at the end, you need to be able to prompt for some information after configuration or just during your normal workflows. Apple Script and OSScript is going to be able to help you. As well as, if you need to be able to do some advanced functionality, need to launch some applications to be able to fully configure that machine, those will, those, that's where those will be able to help you out. So we've talked about constructing a reliable, reliable enrollment trigger, be able to use that enrollment trigger to construct a scalable workflow with all that information laying in your Jamf infrastructure to be able to be easily updatable as you receive new employees, new applications, new requirements. 
And then, lastly, customizing that workflow to fit your business's needs. So with that, here are all the GitHub links that'll be necessary. Um, I will post this presentation slides on my GitHub um, after we get done here. Uh, these will be able to be able to view this. And with that, thank you for joining me in making configuration a piece of cake.